So here's our benzene ring, and I'm going to arbitrarily put an ethyl group off one of the carbons, and we're subjecting that to molecular bromine, Br2, and we're going to use light as the initiator there. So the first thing that we want to do is determine the unique number of hydrogens in this molecule. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can see that if we go ahead and classify these, these hydrogens, we have a methyl group, so they're primary. We have a CH2 group, a methylene group. Those are secondary. And then we have these protons that are next to the ethyl group. Those are called orthoprotons. Those are equivalent. We go one out. We have these metaprotons. And then finally, we have this single paraproton. So the difference uh, between all of these is that these ring protons are bonded to sp2 hybridized carbons. And the two sets in the side chain are sp3 hybridized carbons. So why is that important? So in a radical reaction, you're going to homolytically cleave the CH bond. In a CSP2 hybridized uh, CH bond, remember that takes about approximately 475 kilojoules per mole of energy to homolytically cleave one of those CH bonds. In an sp3 hybridized carbon, uh, depending on the, the classification primary, those are about plus 420 kilojoules per mole. And secondary, we're looking at about plus uh, 410 kilojoules per mole. So the secondary in this case is special because it's also benzylic. And a benzylic carbon is the one right next to the, the benzene ring that I've put with a star. So what that actually does is it, it lowers the homolytic cleavage quite a bit. Um, so a secondary benzylic actually ends up being about um, plus 375 kilojoules per mole. So what does this mean when you're supplying uh, energy uh, into this system? You're going to break the bromine-bromine bond first, and then that bromine radical is going to look for the weakest CH bond to break, and it's going to end up being this one. So this helps us determine uh, the product distribution in terms of major versus minor. We know that we're not going to substitute any CH on the ring due to this large homolytic cleavage value here. So we're going to go, in terms of radical reactivity, secondary is greater than primary. So we can actually form, uh, by first um, glance here, two different products. So let's draw those out. We're going to substitute off the secondary position first. So we're substituting a CH here. That's going to be our major. And then our minor is going to be derived from the primary. But we're not quite done because we can look at the product from the major, which is substitution at uh, the secondary position, and we realize that that carbon has four unique substituents. So we're actually going to end up forming uh, enantiomers here. And so let's go ahead and draw those out with the wedge in dash. So I'm going to arbitrarily draw this as the wedge. Plus, you're getting the enantiomer of that, which is the mirror image, which I'm putting as the dash. And now what we can do is go ahead and determine the RS stereochemistry. So the way we do that, we're going to assign priority to the substituents bonded to that carbon. And that's based on atomic number. So bromine is going to be 1. Then if we look... Let me put in this hydrogen here. That's going to be 4. That's the lowest atomic number, so the lowest priority. 
Then you run into uh, a choice you have to make because the remaining two are both carbon and you treat a double bond as if it was doubly bonded or, or bonded to more than one carbon. So in this case, uh, the methyl group has three hydrogens and this carbon to the left here, which I'm highlighting in a green dot, would be bonded to three carbons. So that would be a priority of two, then this would be three. And we see this ends up being counterclockwise the lowest priority group is back, so this is going to be the S designation. The mirror image is therefore R. So the priorities still remain the same. You have one, two, three, but the lowest priority group is now coming out towards you. So even though you initially go counterclockwise, you have to reverse it and it ends up being uh, R. So these are formed in a one-to-one -one mixture, which is called a racemic mixture. So we're actually going to end up with, with three products, the minor resulting from substitution at the primary, the major resulting from substitution at the secondary, and then we have one stereogenic carbon, so that gives the R and S enantiomers. So how do we actually get R and S? Let's take a look at what happens in this mechanism so we can understand uh, why you get both enantiomers and one is not preferred. So when you apply light or heat to a halogen such as bromine, you homolytically cleave the molecular halogen, so in this case we're getting two, radi two bromine radicals. That bromine radical, as we said, is going to look for the weakest CH bond to break. So let's go ahead and draw that in. We said it was going to be at this secondary carbon, which is benzylic. The bromine radical, we're going to draw a fish hook arrow, will homolytically cleave that bond. So now we have a secondary benzylic radical. And so let's take a moment to consider what orbitals are actually involved here. So we're starting off with an sp3 hybridized carbon. And in this radical, it now is rehybridized to sp2. So what does that actually look like? So let's Let's put the carbon in. We're going to put this methyl group, CH3, in the plane. Let's have a wedge coming out with the phenyl group, a dash going back for the remaining hydrogen, and then where does the, the, the radical electron actually reside? So it's in a p orbital. So let's go ahead and draw both of those lobes. So I'm going to represent the, the orbital as a single electron, but it's in actually both of those lobes. Let's go ahead and call this um, the top face, and then we have a bottom face. So what happens next in this mechanism is that bromine, um, this radical will, will homolytically cleave bromine to brominate from the top face or the bottom face. So it's going to do that equally. So if it brominates from the top face, we're going to go S. And if it brominates from the bottom face, we're going to get R. So it's important to keep in mind that the, a, a radical exists in a p orbital which is orthogonal to the trigonal planar sp2 hybridized carbon. There's nothing in this molecule that's going to discriminate which face is brominated. Therefore, you end up with a racemic mixture. To summarize in the screencast of the radical bromination of ethylbenzene, 
we determined that ethylbenzene has five unique types of hydrogen. Three of them are bonded to sp2 hybridized carbon and therefore have higher homolytic bond cleavage energies. The two remaining are in the ethyl side chain and are bonded to sp3 hybridized carbon. And we, we characterize them uh, as primary and secondary benzylic. We can therefore produce a major and a minor, the major resulting from cleavage of the secondary position. That will then produce a racemic mixture of R and S.